need to understand too, that's what also helps a good program. You have to have members that buy into it. You have to have members that care about it themselves too. Welcome to CrossFit East 10 Over the Bar Podcast. The goal of this podcast is to answer common questions and encourage conversation between coaches, members, and the community. Josh Brock here with head coach Rob Stacy, CrossFit East 10. Today we're going to talk about the programming. Who does our programming? I actually do our programming. I do take input from our coaches as well because they also see other classes that I don't see. That being said, though, I do get input from Joe Brown on our on our programming, uh, from Brett De Bruin on our programming, from Matt Kivenin on our programming. They they influence a lot because I'll ask them questions. And I'll say, what do you think is the biggest weakness, or what do you think the direction that we need to go for this year's open, or what do you think? Uh, is going to get people interested in coming to do this workout. Do you think this workout's fun? There has to be workouts that people are going to enjoy while they're there doing it as well. Is there a method to it, or is it just are you just like throwing stuff together and saying 21, 15, 9, these two exercises? Oh, it's or... random, man. I just flip a coin and decide that that's what we're doing. <laughs> the night before? I, the night before we put the workouts out. No, it's not random, and it, I don't flip a coin. But... So there, there being a method to it, how do you determine what needs to be pro- programmed for CrossFit East 10 as a whole? Okay, so that's a great question. So people have to understand that I view our CrossFit programming at our gym as traditional CrossFit. What I mean by that, I have backgrounds and in, in, uh, certifications and uh, license through several different uh, brands. I have my L1, I have my uh, Level 2, I have went through the gymnastics, the kettlebell course, I have went through the rowing course. I went through CrossFit Kids, which was funny that CrossFit Kids actually is the one I learned the most from uh, about just programming in general. OPEX, which is the highest level that I've done, which means like it's it's a business uh, licensure. It's also a, a nutrition. It's a program and design. It's an assessment. Assessment being what are people's weaknesses, and it's life coaching. So understanding when someone comes to you, like explaining them how to break stuff down in life. Like you've talked to me about stuff like this before. You saw I've went through the you know United States weightlifting courses. I've went through. Outlaws Science and Precision course with uh, Rudy. I've went through Outlaws Barbell Camps with Jared Fleming. Active Life, those guys, I've just recently went to Active Life about half a year ago, and it was awesome. So understanding what people are screwing up on a daily basis in their warm-ups and their cool-downs and during their strength was an eye-opener. And, and those guys from Active Life, Sean and those guys were amazing with that. Probably one of the most valuable courses I've had, and it's added so much to our programming, is understanding where people are getting injured at, or injury prevention. That's that's a big thing with me. So, if you're injured, you're not be able to, you're not going to be able to train, um, and if you're not training, you're not getting your results that you want. So again, that's why that course was so valuable. But back to what you were saying, the method behind it is primarily I, I get that from the program and design courses that we take through OPEX because it just ba- it, the, the whole concept of that is balanced athlete. I take a mixture of what I've learned from strength and conditioning, mix it in with what I've learned from each piece that I've ever had, and it comes out to what we have for our gym. So what I mean by CrossFit as like original CrossFit or pure CrossFit is understanding that Greg Glassman and those guys, when they branded CrossFit, that there was a certain method to their madness, that it just wasn't random. There's actual progressions to stuff. So when I hear some of these guys that are higher up in the science and conditioning fields talk about CrossFit doesn't have any progressions, uh, CrossFit it doesn't have any periodization, like they, they're not actually looking into what's going on. They're not actually sitting down with a coach and understanding like how it's broken down for a month or four weeks, six weeks, 12 weeks. Uh, at our gym, I typically try to program it four weeks in advance. Reason being four weeks and not six or eight or 12 weeks like a normal periodization program is, it's because you've got to understand you're programmed for like over 180, 200 people. You're not programming for three people that you know are showing up every single Wednesday to do their squat, to do their squat program. You. You're, not, you're not programming for four people that you know are going to show up for uh, snatches every single Friday. Yeah. You're programming for 180 to 200 people that are going to come when they want to come. Yep. So you have to understand that as a coach. You have to understand that as a programmer. You have to do that so that they understand and they hit everything that they're going to. So like within a week, for example, it's it's almost silly for fitness reasons to have every Monday we're, gonna do, we're doing a back squat program. 
what people think, like, how's that silly? I've got a mom who missed two weeks of the back squat program, and now you have her back squatting at 90% of her one rep max. One, she probably doesn't know what 90% of her one rep max is in the first place, so now you're just, now you're messing her up in general. Two, why are you asking this lady that's missed two previous weeks to increase her intensity from the you know three weeks ago yeah. without hitting those two weeks. That's that's madness. That's not gonna. It's really setting her up for injury. So understanding that percentages and stuff in CrossFit aren't really relative to what we're doing for fitness reasons, right? Now, if you're a competitor, you should be there every single Monday if that's what your goal is. You yeah. should understand that you're doing a percentage-based program or something to that. So, so that being said, you might see a set that goes uh, back squat five 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 five, and you might see that. CrossFit programs that, right? I like the program that for just in general class. Why? Because you should understand what five heavy reps are if you've been doing CrossFit long enough. Yeah, of course. So when you see a score, like a, a strength set says five, three, you know, a set of five back squat, a set of three, a set of two, and then a set of one, obviously that means we're working up to something relatively heavy. So you're going to need to push yourself. And you're going to push yourself harder than this guy who got three hours of sleep working night shift right? The guy working night shift isn't going to be able to hit his 80% if I said hit five reps at 80%. And you can hit 80%. So it's, it's programming to a mass and not programming to an individual. People have to understand that. Like they have to wrap their mind around like they should understand themselves a little bit more. And it, it gets a little aggravating, but again, it's, uh, it's the one hour that everybody gets to come in and have their fun for the day. So as a coach, you have to understand that. Like it, it gets frustrating and aggravating sometimes, but it's their favorite part of the day. For sure. And for some people, it's, it's just that. It's just their favorite part of the day. It's their, I've heard uh, a couple of the moms say, this is my one thing that is only mine. Like everything else, I have to go do this with my kids. I have to do this with my husband. It's not that they, don't like doing that stuff they love doing that stuff but some people just love to have that one thing now um one thing you're but one thing to, to hit on too and this i'll make this short uh you were talking about what is the method or what what is programmed or whatever so you have to understand too crossfit runs in a season if you're going to have a testing period to see if your ath athletes or clients are improving their fitness there's several different ways you can test their body fat percentage you can test their uh you know, their aerobic ability, their anaerobic ability, their strength. And you can put in those little tests throughout the year so it's an advantage to them. But everybody knows that the big one five-week test for open is for the CrossFit Open is the CrossFit Open, yeah. right? So everybody gets excited for that. It's very easy as a coach to program towards that so that people are testing and peaking at the right time so that they can see the results that they want. Because everybody is going to look at numbers first than they are – uh, did my body fat, it's different, it's CrossFit's different than bodybuilding. You know, bodybuilding, you care about if your body fat percentage is dropping or uh, if you're peaking at the right time for your, your show. CrossFit's a little bit different. So that being said, understanding that right after the open, you should be building in a huge aerobic base. That means you should be going outside and running 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 minutes. You should be getting on a rower for 30 to 40, 50, 60 minutes. You should be doing biking 30 to 40 or 50, 60 minutes. Uh, you should be putting yourself in a position to breathe for longer periods. So you build a huge aerobic base. It doesn't matter if you already have one. I hear that all the time, like I already have one. Until you're standing at the top of the podium in the CrossFit Games, you ain't got a huge aerobic base. You cannot tell me that you have one and you don't need to work on it. That's, that's false. Um, and you should be working on strength. So stuff for strength. You should be building your absolute strength, your deadlift, your back squat, your press, and making sure it's balanced. So what that means is doing single arm presses, doing single arm or single leg uh, deadlifts, doing uh, Bulgarian split squats, making sure that your body is getting prepared for the intensity that's going to come later on down the road. Now, as you shift into uh, later into the summer months, you start peaking at towards a little bit of a little bit of a test. For some people, it's a competition. Uh, for others, it might be, hey, let's test and see where our aerobic ability is at, right? Um, or let's see where our one rep max is at for our deadlift. We've been doing this progression for six to 12 weeks. Let's see where our deadlift's at. And then you progress into the later months of the summer and into the fall, and you should be working on building up an, you know, building up uh, a level of anaerobic ability. Then as you're getting closer towards uh, the winter time, you're peaking again, you're testing and seeing where you're at, making sure the numbers are there. 
Then as you go into uh, the cross into you know the CrossFit season, the winter time, you should be adding in dynamic stuff like your gymnastics. You should be doing more if you're at a level of kipping. All right, we've already talked about building your strength base, yeah. with strict pull ups and strict dips. Now's when you should be adding in more kipping. Now's when you should be doing like stuff like e mobs. Now's when you should be doing stuff like barbell cycling. If you think you should be doing that stuff before all that, you don't understand of building a base. You don't understand what's going to keep you healthy. You don't understand what's going to keep you from being injury free. Uh, a lot of people have shoulder tweaks. A lot of people have knee tweaks. A lot of people have neck tweaks. A lot of people have ankle tweaks. You name it, I can point back and show where they're in their programming or what they were doing or what they think they needed to be doing was in the wrong part of the season. <clears throat> For sure. Absolutely. And um, so to you, what are main components of a healthy program to, to maintain uh, or build fitness? So that's a great question. So my ideal for a healthy program, especially for a, a CrossFit program, because we're not talking about individual design or pr uh, personal training at the moment, because that's, they're to totally different things, is understanding there has to be a balance between volume, intensity, and also the movements that you're doing. Like you can't be nonstop programming. Like I can't be putting in, you know, squat snatches and ring muscle ups twice a week when our population of members, you know, 180 to 200, and you've got maybe maybe 60 percent of that can actually do the two movements. Yeah. All right now, and on top of on the other end though, you have to still test those people that can do those movements. So you have to still put in elements that allow you to do that. That's why we uh, started the phase of RX intermediate and beginner to kind of show people like this is where you actually sit at. Just because you can do an RX workout doesn't mean that you're actually in, you know at RX level. We'll use Jackie for example. So Jackie is a thousand meter row, uh, 50 thrusters at 45 pounds for men and women, and then 30 pull-ups. Well, most of the people can do the first two parts. You know, 30 pull-ups might be the limiter. But let's say the workout is just thrusters and pull-ups, or, th or just rowing and thrusters. Now everybody in the box can RX it, pretty much. I can probably get someone that walks in the gym to do a 45-pound thruster the first yeah. day. Now because they can do a 45-pound thruster for a couple reps, does that mean they need to do this workout RX and do that amount of reps and do that amount of rowing? No. They need to understand what the source of, or what the sauce is of CrossFit. And the sauce of CrossFit, the special sauce, is the intensity portion. And for our box, which makes us different than most, is that we try to focus in on intensity days and then we try to focus in on non-intensity days, which allows everybody to train more often and allows everybody to train injury free. Now, some people might view that as a cardio or a cardio box. I don't know. We also had the highest strength numbers in, in yes. the area. So we'll just leave that at that. A healthy program has to have a mixture of everything. You have to have your couplets, which is a couplet is two work as two movements. So for example, a couplet could be thrusters and rowing like we talked about. A couplet could be pull-ups and air squats. A couplet could be power cleans and ring dips like uh, Elizabeth. And then you have to have triplets, which is three movements, which is uh, you could have thrusters, burpees, and box jumps. Um, and then you have chippers, which is long workouts that you have to you know, chip away at. Usually 10 movements is what a chipper is, you know, 10 different movements that you're trying to work through. It doesn't have to be 10 movements, but that's usually typically 10 movements. Your Tabatas, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off uh, for a certain amount of time. Your station works where you've got like fight gone bad, a minute, a minute, a minute, a minute. Time duration clocks, all right, to get a minimum requisite of work done in four minutes in order to move on to the next clock, right, in order to move on to the next clock. You have to have a mixture of all those elements in. So there's, there's ones that are called time domain, which uh, you have the time that's given, all right, so a time domain would be an AMRAP, 10 minutes, for example, as many rounds as possible have to get as much work done in that 10 minutes. That's a time domain workout. Then you have task priority workouts. A task priority means I have to get this task done in a certain amount of time. What that means is I have uh, 21.59 and it's for time. So time domain and task domain uh, priority workouts. So mixing in those and understanding that every day can't be a couplet, every day can't be a triplet, everybody, every, every day can't be a chipper yet, everybody wants it to be a chipper. Um, every day can't be Tabata, every day can't be that. You have to mix it in throughout your month or throughout your, uh, your programming to understand there's balance in those elements, right? 
then you have to break down your stuff and look at how many reps or contractions that you're doing within the week. So what that means is how many times have I went through a squat this week? I've done front squats on Monday. I did four sets of 10. And then on Tuesday, on Wednesday, I'm doing uh, Karen. So now you've did 190 weighted squats. Yeah, Karen might be 20 or 14 pounds, but it's still weighted and still a squat. Yeah. So now you've done 190 squats in seven, in seven days. Let's add in let, that we're doing a workout with 50 air squats for three rounds. Now you added another 150 air squats in on Friday. You're over 300 squat variations right now. Uh, one of the highest squatting element workouts out there is Murph and it's 300 air squats. And most people when they do 300 air squats in Murph are wrecked for a couple of days. Yeah. So you have to think about, are you programming the correct amount of contractions for that person? Yeah. Are they going overhead too often? For example, if uh, someone has, you know, their their scapular rotation is not working correctly and I'm putting my right arm overhead every single, you know, four times a week and I'm doing push press every four times a week, I'm going to have an injury in my shoulder. That's why there's so much unilateral stuff that we do. I, I think I've asked this question before, but uh, moving forward, what are just a couple of things real quick that uh, we can expect to see? All right, so the month of April's come up. So... Typically after the open, this is this is how I like to do it. Now there might be different ways. You might hear different podcasts talk about different things, but in general, what I like to have done after the open is if you're a competitive athlete, you should be taking a week off, maybe a week and a half, and that means doing nothing. That means getting outside the gym and actually just chilling, right? Or if you come into the gym, just hanging out. Typically after the open for fitness people, they can still come in the gym and still do what they were doing. Like if they took the open to another level that's on them that's not yeah. on the coaches or you know the the product of being in a you know a test or anything that's just on them so if they they have to understand like I'm like really wore out right now I need to probably take a week off it's completely fine to take a week off you yeah. actually recover and you actually get better by taking that week off one or two weeks after the open I usually like typically like to do for the box or for our competitive athletes program stuff that's fun that that might be in their wheelhouse so, for yeah. example, if someone's, like, really good at handstand push-ups, like we just talked about, putting in a 1,000-meter run and a 30 handstand push-ups and a 1,000-meter row for time. So they can just get that taste of, hey, I, I'm, I'm doing what I need to be doing. I'm yeah. getting what I need to be doing in. I'm not killing myself. But at the same time, I'm getting stuff that's fun to do. It's like bringing me back into the gym. It's, yeah. And it's making me excited to be here. And trying to establish some numbers, too, that will help you build your strength for the following weeks after the first two weeks. So what that means is like finding your uh, 10 rep max on something. For me, I'm a big believer that the 10 rep max is what applies to CrossFit. Just to wrap this up, um, if members do have comments or questions, um, or they just wanna just talk to someone about the programming, uh, is that something that you are open to? Yeah, oh yeah, um, like like people think all the time, like, so, and you know this is, as, being close to me and talking to me like when I explain things I take the direct route right. instead of the like the sugar-coated route so if you're asking you know why did why did I do uh, a five rep max bench press I'll just tell you straight up why and I'll tell you I'll probably tell you why for you too yeah and you'll take that as Rob might be saying that I'm just terrible no I'm just telling it how it applies to you I'm trying to help you. so yeah I'm trying to help you <laughs> out like I, and that's how I am like if if I want an answer I want someone to give me the direct answer most people aren't like that and yeah. I understand that that's cool I'm not thinking that my one way is the the perfect way and I don't think that our one program is the best in the world but I think that it's pretty damn good there's a lot of thought uh, yeah. put into it uh, and there's a lot of thought into it and what I mean by that is like there's 180 to 200 people coming to our gym for a reason yeah. and they're not leaving for a reason. They're doing pretty good and they're having a good time for a reason. Yep. And uh, I'd like to think it's because of the program and the time that we put into it and the coaches that we have and the members. All right, uh, We have really good members and people need to understand too, that's what also helps a good program. You have to have yeah. members that buy into it. You have to have members that care about it themselves too. Absolutely. So if you have like, like members who don't really care about what's going into the program or what's going into the thought process of what they're doing, your program's going to suffer. Yeah. And that's because there's just not a lot of, uh, there's not a buy-in. People only grow and get better with a two-way street of communication. Absolutely. Um, so if you were wondering what your weaknesses are, if you'll ask, if you'll ask a coach or ask 
you know, me, I'll tell you straight up what it is. So if they have questions, uh, you know, come talk to Rob. You have comments. Hell, if you have an idea, talk to him about it. He might use it. Yeah, that's uh, another thing, too. Is like we talked about that. Like if you think – if you think that there's something that you see that should be worked on, go for it. Like there's certain times in, in class, uh, we'll use Chad Rambo, for example. I, li I like Chad a lot. You know, Chad will throw in a couple stuff every now and then that'll, that'll you know, resonate with a member. And I'll, I'll actually reference it while Chad's in the class. I'll say, yeah, you know, just like Chad said. Yeah. You know, if, you, if someone gives a good cue or a good tip, I'm always the first one to say, that's what Brett said, that's what Joe said, that's what Chad said, that's what Matt said, that's what Cassie said, that's what Rachel said. That way there's more value bought into just other people's ideas and yeah. not just my singular idea, right? Absolutely. And I feel like as a coach and as a person in charge of a program, that'll make the program twice as good. Two things that you hit on that we – uh, that you guys can look for uh, intensity. We're definitely going to have a podcast on intensity. And the other one is buying into whatever program it is uh, that you're following, buying into it. That's going to be something that we really sit down and talk about. Do you have anything else? Yeah, you that's to that? that, like Josh said, to finish that off right there, I'll give you a little hint into that. Like if you're not buying into whatever you're doing and like and selling out for it, it's not going to work no matter what. It could be – it could be the best strength and conditioning coach in the world giving you the best strength and conditioning program that's exactly built for you. And if you don't think it's correct and you don't buy into it, it's never going to work. Absolutely. And you, on the flip end, you could have a subpar program that you believe heart and wholly about, and it could give you the most amazing results in the world because yep. it's based off what you, you know. It's based off what you, you put into. Yeah, what you put into it. So. Great. All right, comes that time in our podcast where we have a featured member, and today we've got Alan Rutledge. What's going on, Alan? Not much, Rob. Thank you. All right, how long have you done CrossFit? I've done CrossFit steadily for approximately five years now. Awesome. So what is your favorite thing about CrossFit? I think the daily challenge. It provides me that there's no ceiling uh, for what um, it challenges me to do. So tell them a little bit about your back, like your background outside of CrossFit, like what you, what you do for work-wise. I mean, I respect what you do big time, like you're, you're in the law enforcement, and uh, kind of talk about how that helps you. Yes, I've been in law enforcement for uh, 20 years now, and uh, when I grew up, I grew up 20, first 25, 30 years of my life, I was a soccer player, and uh, then once uh, got married and had children, uh, that kind of all went by the wayside, and uh, about seven years ago, I got my obstacle racing with your Spartans at Tough Motors and did some running on the side and started finding that, uh, that CrossFit was a natural uh, fit uh, yeah. or progression after that. So that's what got me into CrossFit initially. Awesome. That's that's a great background. That's one of the reasons that your, your aerobic base is so high is that background in obstacles and background in soccer. Um, what is your favorite thing to do outside of the gym? Well, I've been married for 20 years, and I have a 16-year-old and a 13-year-old son. Uh, so that, that's what keeps me active and uh, yeah. what keeps me going. Tell them about that. Tell them about, the, about your son, uh, the kicker. Yes, uh, my son Connor. He's uh, 16, sophomore at uh, Science Hill High School, and uh, he's a kicker on, on the varsity team. Uh, got his first varsity start as a sophomore, uh, but now he's uh, actively involved in the recruiting process uh, for college. Uh, that's uh, we're finding is a uh, rather difficult process, but we're we're going through it and uh, getting a chance to work with some uh, big time uh, uh, kicking coaches. Yeah, and get yeah. I remember talking to you about it, and I mean he's been working with some guys that have had success. Um, and the other cool thing is, people don't know this is Alan. Like, I, I know this is probably from getting involved with CrossFit. I mean, he brings his sons to the. I mean, it's not just when he's talking about his family over and over again. He, he actually takes his family and brings them to the gym. I've seen him out there on uh, the floor working with his son. So, it's a it's a buy-in system that he's bought into fitness for for long term. Um, but thank you, Alan, for coming on today. And uh, thank you, Rob. Definitely, just just love having you as a member. Uh, you've always got something positive to, to say, even though you, you're the hardest critic on you. You're more you're harder than the coaches are on you. Oh, but that's that's from your sports background too. So, yes. uh, glad to have you. All right, thank you, Rob. Appreciate it.